Hey guys, Alex here. I just wanted to talk to you before I go away. I'm going heading on a ski trip tomorrow and uh, my family hasn't really been skiing before. We don't have a lot of snow here in Australia, but I'm really looking forward to taking my little one and uh, building a snowman with her. Uh, well, she likes the movie Frozen, so I'm sure she's going to be singing that to me ad nauseum. But before I go, I wanted to show you this settings page here. So this is where the video really begins. Um, on the settings page, there's uh, a lot of uh, things taking place that um, people have been not 100% sure what to do with. And so uh, I wanted to just go through each one step by step and give you an idea of uh, how you can make the settings page benefit you. Okay, so at the very top here, you'll see domain. Now at the moment, as of the time of this video, you're only going to be seeing one of these two drop down menus. This is my developer version and uh, we are doing uh, some things which by the time you maybe watch this video in the near future, you may already have these two drop down boxes. And it is, uh, let's say you are buying from the United States or UK or Canada or Australia, for instance, and you're selling on the .com Amazon store, .co.uk, Canada. Now the reason we've got that there is we've in incorporated a currency conversion API as well. And uh, so what happens is, let's say myself, I'm in Australia, I wanna set that to buy something from a local Australian retailer, and I wanna sell that on the US store. I can uh, insert that in there, it'll do all my currency conversions for me. And uh, this is an exciting feature which I'll make a separate video on. Uh, in the near future but for now you're just going to see up here the domain that you're hoping to uh, of the country that you're hoping to buy and sell from and that'll change the uh, change the stores accordingly in the product search menu for um, whether you're looking to buy from uh, the United States and sell on amazon.com and the same for if you're looking to buy from the UK and a store like Argos and then sell on the UK store and that's pretty much what you're seeing at the moment but uh, stay tuned because this uh, additional layer of, uh, to the feature will be coming soon for that cross-country compatibility. Now the next row, I've just emptied these. You do need these full to operate the software. This is your product advertising keys. Um, it's one of the very first things you should have done when, when starting the software. Otherwise the software for the most part won't be working for you. So I'm gonna assume that you've got um, this data in there already. And if you don't, you should go into the setting and into the frequently asked questions and uh, have a look at the uh, have a look at the videos that are on there um, about setting up product advertising keys. Okay, um, now down here you've got the Merchant Fulfilled Total Price feature, and uh, this is for the United States. And down here we've got the uh, the settings again for the United Kingdom. So what this means is if you've got a uh, an MF seller who has a shipping price as well so let's say it's a $12 product with a $5 shipping price if you've gone into your seller central account and got these MWS keys um, and uh, put that data into these three boxes here then what will happen is the software will calculate the $12 plus the $5 and it will be showing you the correct $17 figure to uh, calculate correct gross return on investments and gross profits so um, you do not need to have this in here. These are optional, uh, but if you have it in there, then for those particular MF sellers that hold the buy box, you'll get the, uh, the correct uh, figure in there, including shipping price. So that is the only time we use those MWS keys. And uh, again, it's up to you whether or not you feel that that's something that you want to include. Um, you do need them, uh, although the product advertising keys work for all countries, you do need the uh, MWS keys for the specific country of the, uh, the site that you're hoping to collect that data from. Now, if you're selling um, on the Amazon UK store, then uh, you'll be able to go into your uh, account, but you do need a pro account to access these keys. Um, so this is for the US here, and this is for the UK. Um, further down here, we've got the Walmart API key. This is also optional. We've, we've got two um, options in product search now for Walmart. One simply uses the URL, and uh, the URL allows you to get up to 1,000 uh, products uh, from that particular category. 
uh, whereas the API allows you to dig a lot deeper and move past those those um, initial 1,000 products and sometimes you know there's categories in there which have got up to 90,000. It's extremely easy to get the API keys. Uh, it takes about a minute to two minutes. Uh, I recommend that you do that if you're looking to go a little further uh, into Walmart and there are some lists available out there which give you um, a breakdown of which categories Walmart has available and uh, what kind of uh, what what number of products there are in each and even how that translates across to um, to tactical arbitrage pages so you can check for that on our site next to the Walmart keys uh, Walmart Keys product search drop down menu. You'll see some of that data there, including how to get the Walmart API keys. Um, notifications. So, this is reasonably straightforward. Um, when a job is done, uh, you could be maybe nowhere near the computer. So, there's a, several ways for you to get an alert as to um, it's time to go back and maybe start another scan. And uh, so, you can either get an email notification sent to you. You can ask for an SMS notification, or you can even play a little happy tune. Uh, at the moment, it's just a bell sound. Um, so you, crank, you can crank the speakers up and uh, sit in the next room. And when you hear that bell sound go off, you'll know that the scan is done. Um, we'll customize that at some point so that you can put in whatever kind of sound notification that tickles your fancy. But um, basically, there's a, a few different ways now you can know when a scan is complete. Now, searching. If you search to include the global user matching edits, then if a customer has noticed um, a mismatch between products, for instance, uh, the Amazon product that the, the software thinks should be a, a match um, is put alongside with the source product, and you can and, and a customer has I say customer, but a member has detected a mismatch. They may have decided to correct that mismatch. Uh, by uh, overriding the ASIN and the software saves that. So if you um, have this set to include global user matching edits, then every, every single member who has uh, made a change to the global database, you'll see those changes. And you know we put in there as well that you can search only the machine matches, which is exactly just what Amazon um, decides should be the correct match. But more and more as these matches come into the system, and so many of these are accurate matches, the members are finding the correct matches. It's just making um, the accuracy of all of our data better and better. Um, I can't really see a good reason to ever switch that over to search only machine matching. So the option is there at the moment um, to switch it off, but uh, I recommend you leave it switched on. Now, use local FBA calculations. Now, this is only for USA for now. Uh, UK is coming very soon. We were two thirds of the way through the UK setup by the time I've had to go away for a week, but I'll get that done as soon as I return at the very start of July. So how it works is like this. Um, if you've got this switched on, then, uh, when, then when Amazon goes to put something on the view data page, or when it goes to do any kind of calculation to let you know what the fees are that Amazon is going to take. Normally what it would do is the software would go and it would talk to Amazon, it would say, well, hang on, how much do you want to take for, for weight handling? And how much do you want to take for, uh, for product picking and packing? And, and, and what's the referral fee? And the whole process takes up to a couple of seconds to get that accurate data uh, so that, um, a $30 product might uh, end up being worth $23 to you by the time Amazon's taken their fees. All those couple of seconds add up and take a lot of time. At the end of the day, it's just a complicated algorithm. And we realize that with um, a lot of mathematics and uh, a lot of time to work out if this weight equals this and if this dimensions equals this and if oversize and if standard, and if this category equals 8%, and if this category equals 15%, and so forth, we realized we could create a sum which would um, almost all the time give you the exact same figure as uh, Amazon's uh, calculations. And uh, the, the advantage, of course, is that the figure is calculated like that in a heartbeat. 
whereas uh, normally it might take a couple of seconds. So all of those couple of seconds add up. And if you do have this switched on, then when the figure appears on the screen for the FBA calculation, it'll be blue instead of green, but there'll also be a little button underneath it for you to check Amazon's one. So I recommend you keep this turned on. It'll get stuff into the view data page a lot faster. And then when you've done all your sorting and you've decided, okay, these are the five or six products that I wanna buy for the day, then you might wanna pop, uh, pop the little refresh button on each of those and see Amazon's price, just for that peace of mind so that you can know that the data that you're looking at is accurate. And uh, I'm yet to see an instance where it's not accurate, except for a really random thing where um, Amazon was trying to say that uh, uh, a television was also a computer and um, yeah, they couldn't work out whether the referral fee should be 8% or 6% and it was different in two places. But for the most part, um, that's, that's definitely what you wanna be doing. Now, search type, live only. Now, by default now, everybody's is set for one day unless you have changed this yourself. So now what this means is that um, it's using cache. If it's set for one day, it's using cache. So if any customer has visited um, either the source page or the source uh, category or the Amazon uh, sell ASIN in the last, well, in this case, one day, then you are going to get that cache data um, pretty much immediately, like within a second. Whereas normally, of course, we'd have to go and we have to have a look at the source uh, category, we'd have to go and have a look at the ASIN, all this takes time. So using the cache, we can get somebody else's live data um, really a lot quicker. So um, you can set this to a lot longer, two days, three days, four days, five days, you won't see the setting forever. Forever is for me, because um, we are looking to cache everything and eventually just be updating prices. And uh, that's that's a little bit of a side project that we've got going on where ultimately um, we will not need keys anymore. So this is um, happening. Uh, it is going to be announced soon, but you do not need to worry about the absence of the forever button um, at the moment in your settings. Now, be aware that if you set cache for five days and you end up seeing somebody's cache, and it might not be five days old, it might be any time within that five days somebody has visited, and you might see some two day, six hour old cache because you've got it set for five days or up to five days. And um, you may notice, of course, that the source price is exactly the same. Target, for instance, is still selling that same toy for $12.99. And Amazon, uh, it might appear on your view data page as $23.99, but uh, that was a couple of days ago and now it's like $22.76. So there could be some discrepancies there. So um, one little button that I'm gonna be putting at the top of the view data page is to update all Amazon's cache with the press of a button. So once again, after you've done some of your preliminary sorting and got your view data in, uh, in a row, just the way you wanna see it, uh, you might then wanna hit that, hit that button to update the Amazon data, which will affect the gross ROIs, etc. cetera. Um, so the longer you set your cache, the more likely you are to see some inconsistencies with the Amazon price and the exact current Amazon price. Amazon, as you know, can change several times in a day, um, in an hour even. And uh, you know it might only slip by a, a couple of cents over the course of a couple of days, but then again, it could, it could slip by a couple of dollars and you may be um, evaluating your potential return on investment in a different way if you uh, are utilizing that cache feature. I, for one, like to leave it set for about the two to three day mark. Three days is good. And, uh, and then if I see deals, I wanna drill into them a bit further and see if, if that, that price is holding up and if that ROI is still there. Now, your PayPal address. Now we put this here because if you decide to play the global matching game, um, then we wanna pay you because if, you, uh, if you've made a certain number of matches per month, then at certain thresholds, we will give you a rebate for saying thank you for making those matches and making the global uh, database of products that have been manually matched um, increase the database of uh, valuable, you know, reliable matches um, throughout the entire database. So 
So to play the game, you need to have your PayPal address entered in there. Um, and uh, so that by the end of the month, when I go to check and see who is eligible for a rebate, I can pull out that PayPal address and send people the rebates accordingly. Now, if you want to know how much uh, rebate you're going to get, again, on the Frequently Asked Questions page, we're going to update this data. Uh, for June, we've got the figures here, and uh, we've just added a fourth tier um, for, I think, over 250 matches is, uh, maybe maybe it's 300 matches, gets you $25 and some discounts off Nate McAllister's software. And I've mentioned that on the Facebook page, but it's not listed in here yet. Now we will be continuing to update the frequently asked questions page with um, with updates on what each month's game details are. You'll notice that there's also some things like the most amount of matched in June will be credited a free month. There's one particular user who's almost double everybody else's and I'm pretty certain that she's going to take it out this time around. Um, now you can see here that I have not been playing my own game as well as I should. Um, it says the number of matches that I've made this month is only 20 and uh, obviously um, I need to get in the trenches a little more and uh, make some, some matches myself but a lot of these would have been initial tests and make sure that the system's working fine and once I was totally okay with how it was operating and I saw customers were experiencing the same I probably moved on to the next feature so um, now it does say here the number of changes as of accuracy of matches may change the number may change because we will check the accuracy near the end of the month to see whether or not um, anybody's uh, sending in incorrect matches and we'll, we'll delete those accordingly but for the most part what we found is that everybody's uh, doing a really good job of giving us accurate matches and we've got like nearly 5,000 uh, new manually matched products in the system uh, which just helps everybody now view data um, now that that is set by default for everybody to 300 rows when they very first uh, join the software uh, but some members like to run very long bulk scans and they keep their filters really loose and obviously the looser you set your filters the more um, products are going to populate that view data page and the quicker you're going to fill up your quota now we said here the view data page can experience slowness if a large number of rows is selected here now uh, to be honest i haven't really experienced that too much myself my computer is pretty good but uh, i can take this all the way up to the thousand rows and not experience uh, any any problems um, with my code or the software or the computer slowing down but uh, some people, particularly those with older hardware, may want to keep this at a lower amount of rows and just uh, make sure your filters are uh, nice and tight. Um, now on that view data page as well, it'll show 10 lines by default per page. Uh, I like to crank this up to about 50 and uh, have a look at a big, a big uh, amount of products all at once. And uh, some people prefer to keep it lower and just look at a little pocket of stuff that fits on one page but um, it's each to their own so that is the settings page that is everything that's on the settings page at the moment and we're bound to be adding more things soon and uh, there's plenty more features coming and uh, thank you very much for taking the time to watch and I hope uh, you got something out of it I'm just gonna hit the stop button now and I'll talk to you soon